Hello and welcome to episode two of the MCL series. Um, we're gonna get right into it in a second because what you're gonna have to do really quick, you're here, this is episode two. This takes all the check marks that you need to subscribe and like the video and hit the goofy little bell thing. Yeah, that'd be epic, thanks. Um, that way I actually get something out of this, which is great. Um, okay, so. Last time we did the, um, we looked at everything. We're gonna, uh, we, we did the compiler like mock thing that doesn't do anything. And we did the VM interpreter, which does nothing too. Um, and it's about 1 a.m. now, so I'm not going to be super productive, but we can try it, right? Why not? Um, what we're gonna do first is we're going to figure out how, like which instructions we want to implement first. And I said last time that we're not going to build the compiler right now, but I thought about it a little bit. And I feel like it would be nice to build the compiler first to get a bit of an idea and a feel of how the language works. And um, pretty simple. So let's give that a shot. We're not going to build the whole compiler with jumps and stuff. We're just going to build the very basic instructions. Specifically, what we're going to build is the... Uh, from the reference, we're going to build the very basic instructions, which are push, pop, and print. Okay. Those are the ones that we're going to build right now. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Let's do that. So right now, our code is going to be just written in here because I can't be bothered uh, to get a proper like file reading stuff. So we're going to do push one, push two, print, print. So uh, okay, push two, push one, print, print it. That should print one, two, and then exit, right? And then the other thing that exists is the halt instruction, right? If I'm not completely, is there a halt instruction? Uh, I guess not. Okay, then we don't care. Um, okay, so we're gonna do push two, push two, uh, push one, print, print. Okay. So in the compiler, we have to think about how we're gonna build this. So. There's going to be two steps. So it's going to be a tokenizer and then there's going to be a compiler just because it's nice to do it like that. So uh, we're going to do a token, which is not a struct actually. Um, it's either a keyword, uh, yeah, keyword, which is a string, or it's going to be a value, which is a. Um, do we want to build the other support for the other data types yet? Do we want to do that? Um, if we do it now, then we have to support it all the way through. If we don't do it now, it's going to might be able, it might be pain to add later. Actually, no, it's fine. For now, let's only support the N64 value. Um, and I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. So, one important thing is that there is no white space, no significant white space. However, I think, and I'm not sure actually, but I think the new line is significant. So if we copy the examples like the count here, uh, MCL, test MCL, and we just do like this, then it shouldn't work, right? Um, then MCL, Test MCL. Oh shit, it does work. All right, so it is actually like that. So, so this is completely valid because some do and some don't take an argument. Um, we'll have to continue doing that. I mean, I'm not entirely sure actually if that's fully supported because that would mean that this also works. It works. Okay, so so it's completely yeah, so so new lines mean nothing. Okay, 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 okay. Nice. Okay, well, we can do that. We can deal with it. Um so we have strings, we have values, uh, we have keywords and we have values. Um and we're going to basically tokenize this into a token stream, right? So the token stream is gonna be just a vector of tokens, okay? Um tokenize quantum string we're going to return it anyhow 
result with the tokens as a vector. And of course, it's not going to be a tutorial on how to use Rust. Like, uh, I'm not going to like bother. Um, but maybe you learn something regardless. Now, there's two things we could do. We could build a linear parser, or we could build a recursive descent parser. Those are the two parsers that I can be bothered to write um, in real time. So um, the first thing is going to be, do we need recursive descent? No. No, we don't. Um, do we need look ahead? No, we don't, because we have keyword followed by value or not, right? So our um, our syntax diagram is basically just a keyword followed by zero or one values, like the most basic language in the world. However, that will change once we add more instructions. Um, but the only thing that's going to change is that we're going to get more values, I think, right? So... Yeah, yeah, I think we can do that. Sorry, that had a fucking brain fart for a second. Let's do, let's do this. So, um, right, we're going to, to um, take the content and split it on um, any white space. I think char uh, is white space. Does that is that how that works? Okay, so we can't we split the content on that. Uh, well, first we should trim it. Um, we should filter it such that um, any sort of empty value, so multiple spaces will be split to multiple spaces. I assume so. We're going to have to filter that um, so that the uh, 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 trim so that it's not empty. So we only want non-empty tokens because we don't care about empty tokens. They don't exist. Um, and then we're going to then we're going to um, I think that's it, right? Then we're just going to collect that. So um, raw tokens okay so raw tokens is a vector of strings i guess is that is that okay um strings yeah good enough okay so now um we're just going to build like a basic consumer thing i think right where we're going to say consumer keyword and then if that keyword um well actually this happens later so we just we just check is it a keyword is it a value and then we make one of those so we can actually use a map here um map the raw token and onto we match it right and what we're basically going to do is that um if the raw token is Can we do this? Um, oh, actually, we can just do result. Oops. Jesus Christ, getting rusty. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's pretty funny. Getting rusty. It's pretty funny. Getting rusty with it. Um, okay. It doesn't like this for some fucking reason. So, oh, of course, we don't want to collect this. We want to just do that. Um, okay. All right, so, and we're actually gonna, now we get, in, get into it. So keyword, and instead of doing keyword, we're just gonna parse these straight into the correct tokens. So, uh, um, uh, 
Let's do a public email in here. Call up. I'm gonna have push pop print. Okay, and we're gonna have um proper U8. Push one pop two print three. Okay. So now in the compiler we should be able to yeah. Nice. Cheap. Gonna find up in the cray root. Why not? Why not? Oh, no, it did. Okay, I was just confused. So, uh, just called it an op. It doesn't matter. Um, so this is a bit repetitive, but you know, it's fine for now. We can we can rectify this later if we do need to. But like, this is not that important. It's just a super basic compiler. Right. Um, how's this work again? You do like I64 bars uh, from, no, from string radix raw token 10. Uh, if let's Okay, and is okay. Pattern matching is amazing. We love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, then of course we do. Okay, uh, token um, value and else uh, return error format. Invalid token. We're gonna just print the raw token for now. Um, oh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Don't know why I would give a fuck. All right. It's pretty good. Okay, so we match that. Um, return type inferred. Yeah. What is it? So token op uh, return error. Oh, of course, we can't do this because um, that would be an invalid, like, because we're in a map. So effectively we have, um, we need to propagate the error out, but in order to propagate the error out, we might need to add another token type. Um, or we could panic. <laughs> um, I don't want to fuck this too much though, to be fair. Um, okay, maybe, maybe we can just do okay. Maybe we can just do okay. And then we collect this into a vector of result. But that's fucking miserable, right? Because then we have the result to deal with everywhere. Um, how about we just do um, unknown? For now. And then later we can figure it out. So, um, okay. Unknown. Well, no. also this is not right. Okay. Um, to string. So what this does is it, it iterates over all the tokens in case you don't know what map does, and it matches whether they like are like push or pop, and then it basically it basically maps every item in the array. Or the vector to 
a different kind of value, in this case, an operator token of an operation or value or unknown. And that's all this does. It's not that crazy, but um, actually we don't need this either because we just can wrap the whole thing in an okay. Actually, no, we can't because we do want to iterate over the result. Um, if result iter any uh, token token uh, how do you do that? How do you say match against? Well, we just put a match. So if any of them are unknown, we obviously want to exit with that error code, right? Because that's specifically something we need to catch here because we don't want the unknown token to actually exist. It's just a way for us to, to sort of propagate the error and possibly catch it. And in the future, we might be able to, you know, use this for comments and stuff, but we'll figure it out. Um, because we do want to map every value to something else, right? So we'll figure it out. Um, so match token, and of course, if the token is a token unknown, then we do um, error format. Unexpected token in bagging area, and we're gonna just give it the token. Nothing else, as I said, we don't really care particularly. And um, up and value not covered. Uh, what do you want from me? Oh, <laughs> that's what it wants. Let's just do that then. Um, oh, actually, no, that doesn't work. Um, return error. Again, we're in the Annie, so I'm fucking stupid. Okay, let's convert this to a for loop because I don't really care for for this too much. So for um, token in result. That way we can actually return because otherwise it's otherwise kind of get too complicated because we're again doing the matching thing and it's like pretty but not really. Um. Oh, actually, no, we don't want to. So we don't want to do shit, and then this hits be reference. Okay. So effectively now we're parsing it into the tokens. And the next step is just to uh, compile uh, basic. Well, <laughs> we want to verify this. Um, and then we, we can build into a um, bytecode, right? Makes sense to me. So the first thing we're going to do is tokenize uh, yeah, content is correct. Um, tokens is okay, content. We're gonna just print that. Um, gonna implement debug on this, and of course on this. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what these are. What are these? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Um, this needs to be immutable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if we compile only, let's put these all to false really quick. This is getting hilariously goofy. Um, so we should see push to push one print print. Compile. And we see nothing because why don't we see anything? Compile. Oh, because we turned the code off again. 
Oh, what the fuck? There you go. Okay, so you see push two, push one, print, print. So now we've tokenized it. This is great, right? So we're gonna just uh, tokenizer. Um, obviously I forgot to add that file. Okay, now it's there. Uh, yeah, looks good. Also, let's make a repo. Um, let's make a repo really quick. Just get out of the flow a little bit. Um, that's the right window. Nice. Awesome. Sweet. Let's make a new repo. Um, under me. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, we're going to call the repository uh, MCLRS just because we're super creative. Uh, uh, Reimplementation of the MCL compiler and interpreter in Rust. In Rust, whoa. Sorry, just sometimes it's a little bit too cringe for me, but it is what it is. Okay, so let me go back to here. Okay, get your line at origin. Uh, if you are in master, I think you called it master, right? Yeah, it's just the default still in my system. Sorry, no slavery here, just just master, just a name. Okay, I made this ugly fucking commit that's called episode one just because I can. Um, ignore it, it's like a get initial commit, it doesn't say shit, doesn't matter. Um, so Okay, so it now does that correctly. Now the second step is going to be to figure out um, how would we write this into bytecode? So um, we need a second mapping sort of from the bytecode, from the opcode into the bytecode or something, but for, from the token to the bytecode. We do want to verify that the program is, is valid though first. So um, let's first do validate um, tokens. And we'll just do token. Now, this is really uh, awesome because, yeah, so what happens here in the validate function is that um, we can give it a slice, and the slice has the a great detail that we can pass in any sort of slice, right? It's great, not just a vector, so we don't limit ourselves to that when we unit test it. And um, the second thing is that you can pattern match on it. Of course, you can just turn a vector into a slice, but you know you can pattern match on it, which is cool. Just wanted to say that that's super cool. Um, and of course, this is going to be a result. Um, also, let's just unwrap this for now. Actually, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Let's 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 stick to the funny. Uh, let's get rid of the anyhow here and just use this for now. Um, okay. So validate is going to, well, we could, we could validate and then at the same time generate the opcodes, right? So, uh, compile, uh, compile to opcode. Well, let's, let's compile to instars. So instars is going to be another thing that we have to make. Uh, instar.s. Um, whoa. Wait. I didn't like that. Um, that's like inserting the mother the, the module import to the main file and it somehow fucking crashed. Okay. Um and the instructions gonna just be pub you know. You know? Well technically it's not. Um, I guess it is. I guess it is. It's a wrapper U64 is what it is. So I guess that works. Can we wrap our U64 if it's a if it's a tagged enum? Can we? That seems like it seems broken. Um 
It seems mecha broken, actually. It shouldn't be possible. How do you do this in Rust? That's how I like. How do you actually figure? Like, how do you combine two values into one value? Um, sort of to reliably, um, like to build an interface which can reliably, like, we can just put the uh, the code and the value, and that's it. Um, and see that be a struct in a union. Is that it? Seems like it shouldn't be. It should be it. That shouldn't be it. That shouldn't. That doesn't sound right. Um, hmm. Let me figure that out. Okay, so I looked into it, and it, it, there's two possibilities here. I think, right? So the first one is gonna be to make a packed struct, which fucking sucks, or unions. And I guess they do have unions. I just never knew about it. So let's uh, let's try that out. So my guess, right, was going to be that you can take a, um, you can do this, and then you can do, um, like, but this is not going to work, right, because, uh, first of all, this fucking doesn't exist, and also, it's just not happy with it, right? Which is weird because uh, it doesn't like any of this. Wow. Okay, we need to figure this out first. So let's go to the main. Before we fuck with this more, let's go to the main and figure out what we're supposed to do here. I think this compile just uh, unwrap that. And then the result string found that so compile compile to instructions should just come up. do this. Okay, perfect. Let's try. Um, oh, struct union. Fucking Jesus. I got confused there. That's my mistake. No, wait, that doesn't work. Are unions only a unsafe thing? Okay, for now, we're just not gonna care, okay? Um, for now, we're just gonna do the, the obvious one, which is an enum, um, which is an instruction where we're gonna say, um, up which is eight bytes and um sorry up which is eight bytes the value which is u64 i mean we don't care it it's not actually u64 it's u56 but it's like no fucking way in hell that that works so all right jesus what the fuck? Rust analyzer today is not having it. Um, and then we're just going to do ample instruct. And we're going to write a two bytes. Um, just just going to return u64 and take the self. And that's going to be it. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna say return. Oh well, it's gonna be uh, so up a word. Well, we need to move that fifty-six bits to the right and toward that with sub value. Um, and you know, since it's a sixty-four bit value, technically we need to care, right? So so that um good thing warned me because this would be super weird 
Okay, so we now take the op, which is the first eight bytes, and then the last 56 bits, eight bits, and then the last 56 bits, and we're just make them together um, to 64. And then we're also going to implement a from U64. Um, U64. Um, and that's going to turn itself. I think it's going to be nice. I mean, it's not quite as nice as having a union, but I can't be bothered to figure out how it works um, because it's probably something, probably something I'm missing. Maybe it's only, maybe it only works in Rapper C or only in unsafe context, possibly. Hmm. Not want to know, but uh, not right now. Okay. So up is going to be raw, and um, actually, we're just going to copy this from the other one. So, uh, where is it? Yeah, we're just going to take these two, yoink, and put them in here. And then use a little bit of magic. Cool. Very epic. And then these are just called raw. Jesus Christ, come on. Vim. Okay, mismatch types. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna then do as you Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Incredible. Um so instar is instar from u64 now of course i could implement traits and shit but um no right now. later later i think that's going to be fun Sorry if I don't talk that much right now, it's not that crazy. Okay, and then we're gonna match instar op, which actually, now think about it, should be an op. Which makes this a lot more interesting because, um, can we do this? Oh no, there was some there was some funny funny guy stuff here, wasn't there? Um how do you convert that? How do you convert that? Do you know? Anyone know? So specifically, we now have a um an enum that has specific values. Mm -mm, there was a crate for that. There was a crate for that. I used that in my thesis actually, I think. Um let me find enum something. Um, how would that be? what would that be called? Uh, from to a oh, from wrapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, strum. Was it strum? So let's let's figure this out. So. Ignore the actual code here for a second. Yeah, it's strum, okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna just yoink this strum with derived strum features derived. And because specifically why we need this is because it's not trivial to map any value to an operation, right? Or an opcode in this case, right? Because the enum has a limited amount of options and the integer you could convert from has more options unless you implement literally every single one. So, um, um, What's it called? Scrum. And Scrum has a bunch more cool stuff. Um, to be honest, it's it's really nice. But we're not gonna get into shit right now. Scrum. 
So this didn't work because why didn't it not work? What what am I supposed to do? Um just derive from it. Right? Isn't that all I need? Do I need to tell this? Do I need to write all? What do I need to do for this to work? Um found option. Oh, yeah. Um that's actually a good point. Because it's gonna be an option. Makes sense, makes sense. So we'll just unwrap. Let me just unwrap that. Yes. Because at that point we that's completely invalid and we're gonna deal with this later, so That's pretty nice, I would say, right? Okay, so, um, okay, now we have that. Now we can literally just fill the match arms. Very nice. I actually really like that. That's very fun. And of course, we're gonna like print these. They're gonna become like, we should probably build a thing to convert from, um, the thing into the thing. Yeah. No, for now. Doesn't matter. Uh oh. unreachable pattern. Oh, whoops. And we're gonna do this as well over here. It's beautiful. Love Rust. It's like actually a good language. The the community is a bit meh. Um and there's a little bit going on here and there where you know you're not I'm not entirely sure if I if I understand entirely what the point is like with the async in literally every corner of the world, but not so bad, I guess. Um okay, so this should now um two use sixty four from u sixty four. Now we're back to the compiler where we actually need this to generate the instructions, right? So uh we match on ooh ooh ooh. Yeah. Do we? This is the question, right? Um, how do we parse this? Because it is kind of recursive. Eh, no, no, it's fine. Um, rest is gonna be tokens mutable. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna loop all over all of them and we're gonna make all the Haskell boys angry by doing that but tail call optimization is not particularly that common in Rust I don't think like the compiler doesn't automatically do it I don't think this is great for it but then you have to guarantee it blah 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 um oh we need a result of course oh wow well. That was cringe. Um, result is oh my god, go fucked me up with this. That's rough. That's rough. I, I program like a few hundred lines in it. I don't know. Um, result back Mister. Bit verbose, that's what it is. And then we go to say loop. And then for, no, is it? Do we want to do for? We don't want to do, okay, so here's the thing. We don't want to do for loop because with a for loop, we're limited to a look ahead that's fixed, like one or zero. Um, but actually, we want a variable look ahead in this case. It's not really look ahead, it's not like a L of K language. So, I mean, it is, it's L of zero. But um, yeah, let's figure this out. It's gonna be match um, rest. So we always match on the rest, and then we're gonna match on stuff like um, 
uh, token op token oh fuck it's not right op um, push okay so push followed by token op uh, token value value followed by rest if if you're familiar with closure Pascal fucking Lisp anything um, anything functional or anything with pattern matching you've probably seen this sort of head tail type things really the rest is the tail eh, whether we care particularly I'm not sure but yeah so the tail is the rest and then what we do as well is uh, compile instruction right so we say result dot um, Oops. Make an instruction um, where the op is the op push and the value is um, value. I think in that case you can just do that. Um, What the fuck is value? Is it not U64? It's I64. Of course it is. Am I stupid? Okay, of course it's I64. What the fuck are we gonna do with U64? That's mega cringe. Of course we want I64, and here we want U64. The, the reason, oh, we lose the, we lose the sign bit here. Because right now we only, we're going to only use positive numbers. Uh, also for the parser and stuff, like, it's fine. But later we do want to have sign numbers at which point we're going to throw away the first bit by doing this um, to be more clear this we're throwing not only the first bit but the first byte of data which is fine because we're not going to support those large values because we're going to go with 56 bit maximum size values but that means that the leftmost bit is going to be a sign bit right and we throw away the sign bit because we technically use 64 bit values um it's a little bit fucked up it's kind of wrong um i'm way too tired to deal with that though so i'm gonna put it to doing it and never touch it. i mean fix it later absolutely so um the referencing bolo bar bolo the reference my bolo yeah that sounds good uh, so this is the one thing, right? So this is for push, pop, that sort of thing. Um, it's going to be a little bit verbose to write these. We could simplify that, but somewhere we have to specify which one does and which one doesn't take some sort of value. So it's fair enough. Um, so here, for example, print does not take a value so we don't parse a value out so when we go loop around and do it again we end up with an invalid token right because we expect tokens to start with an op epic right very cool um print okay awesome and then uh this is going to be return error invalid token expected up got and I'm going to do um tail zero yeah that works for me. Um, 
Oh, of course we need to format that. I'm a bit tired. I need to stop here. But, um, I think we all get the gist of how this is going to work. So, um, fair enough. And then of course, if the, if the tail is empty, we break. And that's going to be all. So um, when we break, we actually return the result. And we're happy. Happy monkeys. Uh, got talk. Let me do that. Um, right now we do that. So compile to instructions. Got instars. Compile to instructions. Tokens. Okay, and then we can run the tokens, uh, the instructions as well. Um, and to return them. We need to implement debug for them. Of course, to be at the the type contains a vec instance due to the vec. Okay, fair enough. We're gonna do that then. Change the API again because at this point we then we don't care particularly. Uh, so bytecode is gonna be. Um, Cool. And then here, um, we're going to grab in the execute here, we're going to actually grab an instruction screen. And here's the thing, right? We could grab, we could go do the whole parsing here, but there might not actually be any point um, because we can do that stuff somewhere else. Like it's not part of the interpreter to read the bytecode, like, like to parse it. It's like not part of it. It's a constant time operation. We just do it in the beginning. We're gonna be fine. Um, I like guess not constant time. It's like a, it's like a constant overhead that we don't need in the in the loop. Those instructions. It's just like the the, the end, the all the bitwise shit. Not important. So we're gonna call it there. I think. Um, now we're gonna run it, and I'm gonna see if it runs. Know if it works. If she does. If she works. If she works. If she runs. So we should see push pop prints in that order, like a push push print print in that order. So we want to run it with compile in with exec. Okay, so that worked. Okay, let's look what happened here. What specifically happened is tokenization, push two, push one, print print. So these are ops, these are values. That's our token as they're working. Then the next thing is the instructions sort of in the raw representation. So here we have a push two, push one, print zero, print zero. So these zeros are, are there because the instructions are fixed size. Um, so they have to have a value, but the value is just zero. Um, and then we execute where we read the instructions from the bytecode and we say push two, push one, print, print. Nice. Um, this doesn't actually run any code, of course, because the print, you know, that doesn't actually do anything. So in the next one, we're going to push onto the stack, pop from the stack, stuff like that. Um, one last thing I want to do, though, is show you guys what happens when you run and when you give an invalid code. For example, say print three uh, and push without anything. OK, so. Yeah. If we panic because it says invalid token expected op got op push print three print. So this is what it what is left in the instruction stream. So it expected an operation. It got uh, oh it got an operation, but it didn't correctly parse it because it couldn't figure out because push is supposed to have an argument, right? So push and it can't match an argument. So we should probably rewrite that error to be more reflective of what it actually is. And now with this error, this is what it says. 
it says ML token expected up got value three. That's pretty that's a straightforward, very straightforward um error, I think. I mean we could we could make it prettier. But we're not Rust now, are we? So um right, so what what have we done? We've implemented a compilation, we've implemented parsing, and we've implemented some other stuff. Um but this is the main thing, the parsing and the writing this to the bytecode. Um, not particularly great, you know, but it does the trick and that way we don't have to rely on the C++, which is yucky. Ew. C++, ew. Rust, yes. I'm way too tired for this shit, so thanks for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and make sure to uh, hit the bell so you actually get notified because I don't upload that much, it's it's kind of easy to miss. Um, and if you're here still, you've watched more than an hour of me fucking talking in, in total, so.